Okay, you might be asking why I'm dressed up like this. Because it's wintertime. All right, it's cold. We all know bass bite in the cold, but you got to really dress, I guess, the right way for it. Anyway, some of my favorite times in the winter is going out there in frigid temperatures and some of the biggest fish bite this time of year. That being said, I'm going to dive into my five top favorite wintertime lures. Let's go check them out. All right, now that I got all those gloves off and all that stuff, this is the thing. Wintertime fishing is that can be one of the best times to go fishing and where I live in Tennessee it's normally a deal where you're not going to get it nearly as many bites but the bites that you get are going to be the ones that are really really big so I'm sort of trying to come up with like all right you know it's sort of hard to narrow down just five lures that I want to have in my box for a wintertime event or just wintertime fishing in general now of course I'm going to rule out one bait that's an alabama rig i do throw it but it's something that i do for fun and just messing around with it um but i'm just more thinking about tournament fishing and these five baits have really proven to me to be the most beneficial uh, out of any of the five baits so i had to pick the top five so here we go with number one y'all are probably going to guess this one because it's just a staple no matter where you go okay. and i'm going to pick a couple of them so here's a number six a number five and a number seven shad wrap okay we all know a shad wrap is such a great bait in cold water and why is that okay when we think about fishing cold water when, I, when i'm saying cold water i'm saying below 50. now some of you guys who, who fish up north you know you have ice getting on there like i, I grew up in indiana i fished for several lakes where the water temperature was 35 38 degrees at times now normally it was flowing but that's super cold. When I'm talking about down here down south in the wintertime, most of the time you're talking about low 40s is extremely cold. And that sometimes is when a shad wrap can be the best. You know, I've seen two things happen when I'm fishing in the wintertime with crankbaits. The reason why a shad wrap is so good is because it has such a tight wiggle. Now, the only negative is it's so light, you're normally going to have to throw it on a spinning rod. So I'm normally going to throw it on a medium action spinner rod, um, something like my Cinder Series 7 foot medium action rod with eight pound suffix fluorocarbon. That works for me, straight eight pound. I've tried it with braid, but it doesn't seem to work as well. So if I had to pick one, because I can only pick one of these three, I'm gonna pick a number six shad wrap. A number five is, is awesome, a number seven is great, but that's sort of in between, um, I can only pick one. Now I'd pick all three of these. I, there's times that each of these will be, will outdo the other, but that's for another video. All right, so after number one, I'm trying to think of where I'm gonna go with this one. Number two on the list for the wintertime baits, please, it's a jig, okay? Half ounce jig, no matter where you go, it seems like they always tend to bite, well, they tend to bite a jig quite a bit in the wintertime, and the reason why that is, a lot of times it's crayfish, a lot of times they're still eating bluegill, um, it just does a great job resembling what a lot of times that wintertime forge, and it's a slow technique. You know, for me, most of the time, I stopped throwing a lot of soft plastic in the winter time, just straight Texas rigs. That's normally like around the spawn and then through the post spawn. I do that a lot, you know, throughout the summertime um, and into the fall. And then once that water temperature dips below the 60 degree mark, that's when I pull out the jig. Now for the trailer for this jig, Bandito Bug. That's what my favorite jig trailer is. And I'm gonna show you real quick here how I put it on there. This is just a green pumpkin one. Winter time is sort of unique because I feel like throwing a bigger profile bait doesn't necessarily always mean you're gonna get a bigger fish. I've caught a lot of big, some of my biggest fish in the wintertime on a number five shad wrap. So this is what I do. I truly feel like taking a pair of scissors and making that jig a little bit smaller profile is a good thing. Now, now I trimmed him up a little bit, just to maybe a little bit below the hook. That's a pretty big size hook. So if a big one bites it, I'm gonna be all right. This is actually one of mine that I had out of, this is the jig I throw a lot, but this is the one that actually got rusted. So not gonna be my tournament box, but that's gonna be my fun box. Now the Bandito Bug is a little bit bigger profile bait. I don't need all this action for this application. So I'm gonna cut off the appendages real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. And I'm gonna cut him down about halfway. And there you go. So you got a little green pumpkin. I'm going to pull it apart. That way I have a little bit of action. Thread him on. Make sure I thread it on the right. Put a little super glue on him and you're ready to go. So the key is you don't need a big giant profile jig. For me, this is what works well. Um, 
I've caught plenty of big fish on a small jig, caught plenty of small fish on a small jig, or even a sm big fi or small fish on a big jig. So it just seems like if you can get bit in the wintertime, normally, you know, if you get 10 bites, you're going to get a couple really nice fish to bite. So if I can downsize my presentation just a smidge, um, I'm going to get a couple good quality bites, and that's why I sort of downsize my jig profile. Number three. All right. Number three for me is definitely one that has caught a lot of big fish all over the country, but is really big in the south and the southeast, actually even in Texas. It's a lipless bait. Now this one right here is an Arashi rattle and vibe. This bait has a little bit more of a, a unique rattle. It's not real loud. And then on top of that, it has a really tight wiggle. So I feel like it's a better bait in really cold water. Uh, the one mistake that a lot of people, I mean, beginner fishermen make when throwing a lipless crane, or people that are new to throwing a lipless crane bait, is they tend to reel, cast it out there and reel it in. A lipless crane bait, obviously, it does not float. Most lipless crane baits don't. Um, there are a couple out there on the market, but majority of lipless crane bait market, they sink. This is the thing. You have to switch up your retrieve. A lot of times when I cast my retrieve, cast this lipless crane bait out there, cast that Arashi vibe out there, it hits the, the ground, hits the bottom of the lake, and I'm letting it go down through there, I pull it up. I vary my retrieve quite a bit. When I hit a stump, when I'm hitting grass, uh, the key is to constantly pull, let it fall. If I'm in super shallow water, I'll reel it, and then I might pull it up just to switch up the retrieve, and a lot of times that's when you're gonna get your bite. So the big thing about a, a lipless crankbait is you can vary the retrieve, and that's how you make the fish react. I've seen several tournaments where water's 42 degrees and for whatever reason you get a little bit of a warming trend and the main river might be cold or the main lake might be cold, but those pockets warm up and the flat pockets warm up the quickest and get a little bit of sun and those fish start going up there and a lipless crankbait can be killer. Just remember, vary your retrieve and you're gonna see a lot more success. Number four, okay. So I sort of had a tough time, you know, picking these five lures because there's so many different things out there. I'm gonna sort of name one that's not on my list, Silver Buddy. It's a great bait. You know, that's something that definitely catches a lot of big fish in the wintertime. But this one right here has probably come up with the majority of my big wintertime sacks, and that is a jerk bait. Suspending so jerk bait. This one right here, you can tell it has been chewed all, <laughs> to, to, it's been chewed up. I have caught a ton of fish on this bait right here. It, you can obviously tell it's gone through a lot of events. And so I sort of hold on to it. This is the one that, man, there's several tournaments I've had really good high finishes because of it. Now, this is a apple of shadow out deep. And the key with a jerk bait when it's really cold is your cadence and then making sure that it sinks or suspends. I want a jerk bait to slow sink or to suspend. So I will actually, some people will put the suspend, suspend strips on their jerk baits. Personally for myself, I will put larger hooks. I don't mind if my jerk bait's slowly sinking. Now I don't want it to sink like a rock because the majority of your bites will come on the pause. The only thing is, that being said, I want it to be either suspend or to slow sink. So I can allow this bait to really get down there and as it slowly sinks, one grabs it. Normally for me, the best thing or the best cadence is a one, two, pause, one, two, three, pause. And you just sort of have to vary and find out what, how they want it that given day. Do they want it a couple second pause? Do they want it five seconds? Do they want it 10 seconds? I've seen it to the times where the water's like 42 degrees and I've seen it where they want it fast. A good friend of mine, Matt Airy, was on Beaver Lake. A couple years back, water was low 40s, maybe high 30s. Everybody was fishing their jerk baits really, really slow in practice, and it found come to find out they wanted it fast. So sometimes they go against the book, but majority of the time, the cooler the water, the slower you're gonna want to work your jerk bait, and normally those fish will bite it on the pause. All right, last but not least, this is really hard for me because like I said I've had so many different things that I would want to put in this video, but I only picked five. It is the Storm Largo Shad. Single swim baits uh, are no doubt one of the best all around soft plastic baits to throw. So in the winter time, it really shines because they're eating on shad. Normally they're eating on shad or crayfish. And if you're in a little bit of a clear water situation where the fish are six foot or deeper, a single swim bait can be one of your best baits 
in your tackle box. Now, this one right here is the four inch Largo Shad. Another one that's really good um, is the Guggenbait swim bait that just came out recently. And, and But realistically for me, I'll throw it on a quarter to a half ounce head, maybe 12, if I'm throwing a finesse style like this one right here, the smaller hook with a little ball head, I'll throw a 12 pound line. If I'm throwing a half ounce head, I might throw up to, you know, 14. I'm not gonna overpower the swim bait. And the key is, you know, just slow rolling it, very similar to like an Alabama rig. Sometimes a single swim bait will outdo an Alabama rig. And that's one reason why I always have it in my boat, always have it rigged up in the winter time. You just never know when that swim bait bite is gonna kick up. And you can catch them realistically with this exact same set setup right here from three foot of water to 25 foot of water. So that's the reason why this one rounds out my top five. Okay, okay, so that is my top five. You might be surprised that I left a couple of them out. Maybe there was a couple of them that I left out that you're like, man, Jacob, you should have probably put that in there. Comment below, let me know what your top five favorite wintertime lures are and of course, where to compare. That's the best five lures for me that have worked day in and day out in the wintertime months. Hopefully these tips help you guys out. We'll see you guys next time.